um, before we begin, uh, just a quick reminder, thank you for joining us today. And let me introduce uh, Master Sergeant Reese. Good day. I am Master Sergeant Chris Reese from the Air Force's Personnel Center's Directorate of Personnel Programs. I am A1C Pinkett from AFPC Director, Directorate of Personnel Support. We will serve you as your viewers today. We will be covering a lot of information, so we ask that you hold all of your questions until the end of this briefing. Today, information and guidance will be provided on the Air Force Enlisted Retraining Program Purpose, an overview of the First Term Airman Retraining Program, your roles and responsibilities as the customer. We will then interpret the MyPERS Retraining Advisory along with the advisory notes. We will provide a demonstration of how to navigate through the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory and afterwards, we will cover some frequently asked questions, then finally open up this forum for any additional questions you may have. In accordance with Air Force Instructions 36-26-26, the overall objective for the Air Force Retraining Program is a force management program used primarily to balance the enlisted career force across all Air Force Specialty Code and ensure sustainability of career fields. It is an opportunity to return disqualified airmen to the productive status. And lastly, it is the opportunity to allow a limited number of airmen to pursue other career paths within the Air Force. Let's now discuss year's first term airmen. The First Term Airmen Retraining Program is designed to retrain airmen that are serving during their first enlistment, including staff and technical sergeants serving their first enlistment. This program allows airmen to retrain into skills where shortages exist. If a First Term Airman is retraining eligible in accordance with AFI 362626 and meets the AFSC specialty qualifications outlined in the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory, he or she may apply to retrain into one of the open quotas found in the FTA column of the MyPERS Online Retraining Advisory. For example, in this illustration, the 1-Alpha-0 X1 Career Field Manager is in need of four additional first-term airmen to join their career field. See the yellow arrow. Whereas, see the green arrow, the 1-Alpha-8 X1G Shred Career Field Manager is not in need of any first-term airmen to join their career field at this time. Let's move on to your first-term airmen retraining window. As an FTA, if interested in retraining, you must do so within your retraining window. Stateside assigned airmen apply between the 35th and 43rd month of their current enlistment. Six-year enlistees may apply within the 59th and 67th month of current enlistment. Eligible overseas assigned first-term airmen may apply nine to 15 months prior to your DROs. However, if that window is outside the current fiscal year, your application will be regarded as ineligible. For an example, for the upcoming fiscal year 19, we only have the capability to low retraining class seats that start from 1 October 18 through 30 September 19. If your 9 through 15 month zero eligibility window puts you on or after 1 October 19, that falls outside of fiscal year 19. Your retraining application will be closed due to non-availability of class seats within their current fiscal year 19. Let's now move on to discuss your options to seek retraining before your, before your window opens. Newly implemented this year, first term airmen in a shortfall AFSC now have an opportunity to apply for retraining into other shortfall requirements AFSCs, so long as quotas exist. The MyPERS article displayed here has been updated and now posted on our 
retraining my purse homepage with this new initiative. You are highly encouraged to obtain additional counseling from your base career assistance advisor before choosing this option. So to reiterate, first term airmen that are currently holding a control A at the C that's listed on the shortfall requirements list, you are now eligible to retrain. We realize the AFI policy, AFI 36-26-26, Table 4.1, states first term airmen in a shortfall are not eligible to retrain. That update is in the works and that revision should be posted within the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Headquarters AFPC holds the first term Airman Board of Selection of Retraining on or about the last due to day of every month. Applications will be approved and disapproved no later than the 15th of the following month. Applications are selected based on quality indicators shown here, for example, top EPR rating. If there is an EPR on file, current grade, projected grade, next two EPR ratings, date of rank, total active federal military service date, aptitude qualification examination score in this area, elect um, electrical, mechanical, administrative, general, and lastly, requested AFC preferences. This FTA retraining application will meet a maximum of three boards, one per month. Each board, the same selection is performed. Application not selected for approval will remain in pending status until the next month. For a maximum of three months, you will receive an automatic message through your open retraining my purse incident each time your application has met the board. Once you have met your third board and have not been selected to retrain, you are no longer considered consider eligible to apply for retraining as an FTA. Your next opportunity to retrain will be as soon as a second term airman after you have re-enlisted. Let's now cover your rules and responsibilities as the customer. These rules of engagement should be followed to ensure your retraining application is processed quickly. The next few slides cover rules of engagement. We ask that you pay close attention. Following these ROEs will greatly aid in the processing of your retraining application error free. Step one, are you eligible? Prior to submitting a retraining application, you must first determine if you are eligible to retrain at this point in your career. This is a list of factors that automatically disqualify you for retraining. Input of any of these disqualifying factors automatically render you ineligible to retrain. Please note, even if selected and approved to retrain, input of any of these disqualifying factors before your class start date will result in cancellation. We also use the criteria outlined in Table 4.1 in determining specific eligibility. For example, if when you click on Request of Retraining link and receive this message, you are not eligible to retrain. One of these assignment action codes are updated on your record in mail PDS that are rendering you not eligible for promotion, reenlistment, retraining, or all three. There is not a need to call the Total Force Service Center to ask why you are not eligible. Simply log on to your virtual MPF. Under Self-Service Actions, you will there click on the retraining link. As you see, as you can see here, the reenlistment code and assignment availability code is clear text for you. In this example, this customer is pending status with the medical or physical evaluation board, rendering this customer ineligible to apply for retraining at this time. If this information display is not correct, provide the appropriate supporting documents to your local MPF for correction. Let's move to step two, reading the online retraining advisory. Step two, review the online MyPERS retraining advisory and advisory notes. The retraining advisory is the primary means to advertise retraining requirements by fiscal year. 
The advisory advertises two types of requirements, out quotas, which are AFSCs where the Air Force has determined an overage may exist, and in quotas, AFSCs where the Air Force has determined shortages may exist. You'll use these AFSCs and the number of quotas to determine your preference when applying for retraining. This is how the retrainer advisory appears on my purse. This way here is a screenshot of AFSCs listing out quotas. Please note that retraining out quotas do not apply to first term airmen. Retraining out quotas are for second term airmen use only. Retraining in quotas identify AFSCs where the Air Force has determined shortages may temporarily exist. You will use these AFSCs to determine your preferences when applying for retraining. Retraining in quotas apply to all ranks listed. For example, in this illustration only, on row one, the career field manager for 1Alpha 0X1 is in need of three first term airmen. Whereas on row two, the career field manager for 1Alpha 1X1 1 is in need of 41 first term airmen. The retrain advisory notes are co-located with the retrain advisory and provides guidelines and special or unique requirements for each AFSC. Applicants must review the retrain advisory notes for quota prior to submitting an application. Applicants must check these notes closely to avoid delay in their application process. When you click on the note number, the definition will appear in the yellow box. For this example, the 1 Bravo 4 X1 Career Field Manager has requested advisory note 125, which reads, applicants must have less than 16 years total time in service from course graduation to apply. Step three, the last step and final step, is to review the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory located also on my purse. Here you will review the AFSC specialty descriptions. This will help you in making your final selection of which AFSC to retrain into. Simply type AFECD in the search area. You will then be directed to the Enlisted Classification Directory link. The enlisted classification directory is posted twice a year in October and April. Ensure you click on the most current directory link. Once you have the directory open, clicking the bookmark option is the best way to navigate through. If quotas exist to retrain into 1 Alpha 0 X1, here you will click on 1 Alpha to review the entry requirements for this AFSC. The ECD provides a specialty summary, duties and responsibilities, <coughs> and specialty qualifications expected of each AFSC. In paragraph 3.5 of each AFSC, you will find the mandatory entry requirements. In this example, for entry into the 1Alpha 0 X1 career field, you must be medically and physically qualified for in flight refueling. You must have a normal depth perception, eligible for worldwide deployment, and cannot be taller than 77 inches or shorter than 64 inches. For this AFSC, you will need to obtain documents from your local military treatment facility showing that you are medically and physically qualified to retrain into this AFSC. Now let's check the last of the 1Alpha 0 1, 1 mandatory requirements for AFSC entry, also located within the Enlisted Classification Directory, Attachment 4. Attachment 4 lists all the minimum requirements for your mechanical, administrative, general, or electronic aptitude scores, also known as ASVAB. Attachment 4 also lists the strength aptitude codes and the PULHEs, the physical profile series factor that can be found on your Air Force Form 422. In this illustration, 
Here you will see the minimum requirement for the general aptitude score is 55. Strength aptitude codes are reflected in column X and identify strength standards required for entry into each AFSC. Here the requirement is code K, defined as retraining, must lift a weight of 70 pounds. Your POHES may be a minimal of 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, and must be accurately reflected on your Air Force Form 422. Okay, now that you have determined your eligibility, you have confirmed that quotas exist, and you verify that you meet the specialty qualifications for the AFSC you desire to retrain into, you may now click the Apply for Retraining link. Allow us now to cover some frequently asked questions. Question one, how do I track my retraining package MLPDS? Once you request to retrain, a retraining technician will be assigned to your application. Please allow a maximum of 20 duty days for that technician to review your record to establish eligibility for your requested AFSCs. There is not a need to call the Total Force Service Center for status of your retraining application. To track your application, log on to the MyPERS website under My Account. Here you will see your request for retraining and MyPERS reference number. At all times, you are able to communicate directly with your assigned retraining technician by utilizing this open ticket. Also on this screenshot here, if you look down left, see where it says still need help and contact us on the left-hand side. So for those A1Cs that are retraining eligible and you do not have an EPR on top, MILPDS will render you ineligible to retrain. So if you know you are eligible, meaning you don't have any other derogatory things on top, um, ARC 15 and such like that, you can click this contact us and that's how you will open up your retraining application. It'll open up a ticket and you simply type in A1C without an EPR on top, eligible to retrain. That way the retrain technicians will know to open up a retraining application for you and you can put in your AFSC preferences there up to five AFSCs. Again, that's for the A1Cs that do not have an EPR on top. That bottom left-hand side, contact us, will open up your retraining application. Now, if you click Apply to Retrain on the regular MyPERS homepage, the A1Cs without EPRs on top, it will render you ineligible. Okie dokie. Next question. I am a first term airman and I have missed my retraining window. How do I apply to retrain as a first term airman after my retraining window has closed? Now, first term airman, you may apply for retraining as an exception to policy if you are not allowed to apply for your normal retraining during your normal retraining window, or if you're requesting to retrain, considered to be retrained outside of your normal retraining program eligibility criteria. ETPs are only considered in extreme cases and justification must present unusual circumstances uncommon to other Air Force members. If you're attempting to prove miscounseling or an injustice occurred, your ETP must include a statement from that organization that provided the miscounseling all ETPs must be endorsed by your respective commander explaining the circumstances. ETPs will not be granted based on personal convenience. For example, individuals' indecision, lack of employment, or educational opportunities. Again, all ETPs must have your commander's endorsement. Next question. When am I required to obtain retainability for my approved retraining class seat? Once you receive notification of your class start date, within 30 days, you are required to obtain a maximum of 24 months retainability from class graduation date. Keep in mind that some AFSCs awarding courses require additional retainability and will be annotated as such on your training RIP and listed within your student reporting instruction. Next question. 
Where can I find my student reporting instructions? All student instructions are located on the education and training course announcements page listed here. Your student reporting instructions are mandatory requirements that must be met prior to departing for class. Shown here is the education and training command course announcements website. This site is maintained by headquarters air education and training command. And it's also provided on your training rip. Once CAT logged in at this site, click the search tab to type in your new retraining AFSC at the three skill level. Shown here, type it in the course ID slash number block. Remember to type in your new retraining AFSC at the three skill level. This site will then populate your full course description to include your student reporting instructions, security clearance, and uniform requirements. Again, your student reporting instructions are mandatory requirements that must be met prior to your departure for class. In this example, please note there is an active duty service commitment of 36 months for this particular course of all students must have an interim of final SCI eligibility clearance updated in JPS system prior to departing for this training. Next question. How often is the online MyPERS retraining advisory updated? Answer daily. As class seats are being filled, the advisory will reflect such changes. Please be sure to always, always refresh your browser to view the most current version. And remember, only apply for AFSCs where quotas exist, meaning if there is a zero annotated, there are no more class seats for that particular AFSC. So let's take a look at the AFSC. The last one there is 1 alpha 6 X1. For this illustration only, there are no more class seats for 1 alpha 6 1 1. Do not apply for 1 alpha 6 1 1. That concludes today's first term airman retraining webcast. Thank you for logging in. Today we provided you information and guidance on the Air Force Enlisted Retraining Program purpose, an over, uh, overview of the first term Airman Retraining Program, your roles and responsibilities as the customer. We interpreted the MyPERS Retraining Advisory along with the advisory notes. We will provide a demonstration on how to navigate through the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory. We then will cover some frequently asked questions. We will now open up this form from any additional questions you may have. Please type them in now. All right. So the first question I see is with regard to the two alphas. So there's a lot of questions actually out there in two alphas. Two alphas, first term airman, what I need you to do is go to the MyPERS Retraining Advisory. Go to the MyPERS Retraining homepage. Click on Retraining Advisory. Everywhere where there is a... Um, 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 what am I trying to say? Everywhere where there's a number is an eligibility for you to retrain into. Also look at the advisory notes. Some two alphas uh, can't retrain into some specific AFSC, so you got to go out there and look. Um, the retraining memorandum from your career field manager applies to those first-term airmen that are applying outside of their window. So that rumor that's out there that two alphas cannot retrain is not true. Please help us out with rumor control. Look at the MyPERS articles. They're updated and the advisory is updated as well. Please help us out on rumor control. Two alphas do have the capability to retrain. Um, take a look at those articles. Um, so uh, Airman Diaz, there's no such thing as a uh, mandatory, what did you say, returnee listing. I think you might be getting that uh, confused with the overseas listing. Um, there's no uh, mandatory retraining for first-term airmen. That is just for in-corp. So uh, folks trying to get those two confused. Uh, there's no mandatory retraining for FTAs. So Airman Worrell uh, is asking, how does lateral retraining moving if there's no spot? 
Uh, again, folks, if there's no class seat, if there's a zero annotated by the AFSC, that means there's no class seats. It's zero class seats for that AFSC. So you will not be retraining to that AFSC if there's no class seats. There are other opportunities. Um, so you need to look at that retraining advisory and the advisory notes and uh, apply for those AFSCs that have class seats. So there's a lot of questions in here about how long does the application process take. So the eligibility process, process takes less than 20 duty days. And then I see quite a few questions. How soon will the class seats um, be assigned? Now remember folks, we wait on you to turn in your documents. Uh, the retraining technicians have to see that you are retraining eligible into that specific AFSC, meaning uh, we can go back to the example. Let's go back to slide. Let's see what we were talking about, the one alphas, just as an example. Let's go back to slide 22. All right, so here, this is, this is, I know that a list of classification directory is huge. It's two volumes and numerous uh, attachments. So again, when you get in there, that ECD, do not do the control find option and type in the AFSC because this, this classification directory is a monster. What you want to do is use that bookmark option I showed you earlier. Uh, let's take it back just a bit take it back let's take it back to 19 real quick so there's one base out there that's saying they cannot hear uh, so there's the directions there mm -hmm. for a uh, better sound uh, so real quick so back to the ECD make sure you see that blue arrow click on that bookmark option and then um, type in the a go straight to the AFSC you want to uh, take a look at so back to slide 22 so on slide 22 there, uh, this is just an example of the one alpha zero X one uh, requirements. So they have specific medical requirements. So remember the retrained technicians cannot assign you a class seat to the one alpha zero X one until they see on your Air Force Form 422 that you are worldwide eligible, that um, what is this height must not be less than 64 inches or more than 77 inches. So back to the original question. The original question was, how soon will the class dates be assigned? They're assigned as soon as you turn your documents in. So the earlier you apply, you get the eligibility check, turn your documents in, we'll get you assigned for a class C. Uh, Airman Wardell, is it a Warrell? How does your school affect your retraining? Uh, if you can just go ahead and elaborate. I'm going off of the Facebook questions right now. If you can just go ahead and elaborate on that question. Um, if you're asking uh, about your school instructions, that's on that um, that uh, that one website, the ECHO website, the education training uh, course website, if, if that's what your question is. Uh, so we get that question a lot, uh, Airman Derek, I can't pronounce your last name. So the question is, if you already have your retraining mandatory documents, your mandatory retraining documents, can you go ahead and submit those before the eligibility checks? Um, I would not recommend that because uh, the retraining team at the Total Force Service Center, um, that, that's a part of their roles and responsibilities, do the eligibility check first. Uh, you want you would want them to do the eligibility check first to ensure you are overall eligible, and uh, then they will notify you of what documents to turn in. Uh, so if you already have the documents, uh, that's great. I just would hate for folks to start initiating Air Force Form 422s or initiating recommendation letters before the um, the team here, the professionals here, the more experienced technicians here, uh, even deem you eligible. So that's just my 10 cents. So uh, Airman Marquez, it looks like the exact question, uh, three questions up. Again, folks, you get your class seat 
when you turn your documents in, uh, plain and simple. Sometimes we have applications that sit out there eight, sometimes nine months. Uh, just remember, you'll be assigned to Class C when your eligibility check is done and when you've turned your documents in. It's as simple as that. So uh, when, when the folks ask, when will the class seats be assigned? The answer is when you turn your documents in. Eligibility check first, turn your documents in. So in other words, for first term airmen, class seats will not be assigned until you turn your documents in. Maybe I'll answer it that way. <laughs> Okay, so the shortfall policy, we'll go back to that slide. Uh, let's see here. Let me flip through. What slide was that? That was slide number seven. So slide number seven is your snapshot of uh, what the new policy is, the new air staff policy. And uh, there's no ETP for the question was, uh, I'm in a shortfall and I want to retrain a non-shortfall. Can I do an ETP? Uh, no, ma'am, no, sir. There's no ETP for that. So the policy allows you now in a shortfall to apply to retrain into another shortfall. So it's shortfall to shortfall, okay? Shortfall to shortfall. Um, there's no more early retraining. It's shortfall to shortfall in your normal retraining window, okay? That's the new policy, air staff directed. The um, AFI will be updated as such within the fiscal year, and the MyPERS articles are out there updated as well. So shortfall to shortfall in your normal retraining window. Uh, yes, so we'll go to the webcast area and we'll answer some of the questions there. Okay, so we'll start with uh, Sergeant Sweeney here. Uh, do we have to provide medical fiscal clearance paperwork before submitting the application? So the initial eligibility check, when you actually click on that tab, apply for retraining, that's where you will put apply for retraining and select up to five AFSCs. If you have your medical and fiscal clearance paperwork ahead of time, uh, go ahead and submit it. I'm not gonna tell you not to submit it, go ahead and submit it. What I am suggesting though, is to wait until your eligibility check for that particular AFSC. There are some career field managers that want their retrainees in to be at a certain time and grade and a certain time in service. That information is posted out there for public view on the retraining advisory. Remember the retraining advisory also has advisory notes. So you guys got to go out there, guys and gals got to go out there and uh, read those advisory notes. So again, to answer that question, because I see a lot of questions about that, um, wait until the eligibility check. Wait for your technician to tell you you're eligible for that AFSC. If the question is, can I submit my documents early? Yes, submit your documents early. I just advise you to wait until your retraining technician um, does that eligibility check for you. Okay, uh, Airman Geiger, a little clarification. So his question is, I am currently not in a shortfall AFSC, but I want to retrain into a shortfall AFSC. That's great. It uh, looks like the question is, when is my retraining window? So let's go back one slide to slide six. Slide six displays the retraining uh, eligibility window. Now remember, I don't want you guys to get say guys, guys and gals, airmen proper. I don't want you airmen proper to get uh, uh, confused about that new shortfall policy. So again, shortfall to shortfall. If you're in a shortfall AFSC, yes, you can retrain within your retraining window into another shortfall AFSC. If you're not in a shortfall AFSC and you want to retrain, your retraining window is still the same. Every first term airman, this slide right here is your retraining window. Every first term airman. One thing I did want to highlight, my overseas first-term airmen, remember that 9 to 15 months prior to your DROs, if it falls outside of the fiscal year, your application will be closed due to ineligibility. Just for example, remember that example is up there. 
if you're nine to 15 months prior to your Duros eligibility window falls in, just for example, October 2019, so that's going to put you in fiscal year 20. That makes sense. Remember, fiscal year 19 starts October 2018 and ends September 2019. So if your eligibility window, this is for my overseas FTAs, if your eligibility window puts you in fiscal year 20, that's when you'll need to apply in fiscal year 20. Staff Sergeant Field, good question. His question is, not sure if I missed it or not, but is there a certain number of times someone can apply for retraining? Now, we're talking about our first term airmen, so yes, we'll go back to that slide. Let's see here. We'll go back to slide, what's that, slide number eight. So slide number eight here just briefly explains the FTA board. The FTAs, you're going to, um, your application meets a board. It's an in-system board, and it meets it every month for three months. Okay, we're just flipping through uh, some more of the questions here. Uh, let's see here. And just keep in mind for FTAs, um, if you do get selected, um, you can only retrain as an FTA once. For in court, if you get selected, you will have to wait 24 months before you can retrain again. Uh, can airmen apply for retraining as well as applying for commissioning? So remember, anything that you do to alter your mil PDS record, i.e. apply for separation, retirement, commissioning, um, an assignment, uh, special duty, those things are going to render you ineligible for retraining because it's somewhat those assignment action codes and assignment limitation codes somewhat put a hold on your mil PDS record. Uh, it's kind of like an indicator that this specific mil pds record is pending action so uh the question is can i apply for retraining and commissioning program at the same time that answer is no because once you get that commissioning code don't quote me i believe it's aac05 or something similar to that um, that's going to render you ineligible to retrain basically mil pds is just saying this social has a pending action Yes, uh, Airman, um, ooh, Airman Robert, I'll just say Airman Robert. Uh, if FTA early retraining has been removed, yes. There's no more early retraining for the first term Airman. Shortfall to shortfall within your retraining window. So the question is, do I need to take my ASVAB prior to uh, retraining to request a higher score? Yes, you can retake the ASVAB score if you already know that you do not meet the ASVAB score. Okay, let's flip over to some of these Facebook questions. Ah, Airman Edwards, that's a good question. So the question is, if I apply for the shred of an AFSC, um, will the application be kicked back because I do not hold the slick AFSC? For example, if I am a, I'll just use my AFSC. If I'm a 3FO, but I want to apply for 3PO, which is Security Forces A shred or B shred, the CADAMs or um, uh, the dog handlers. Um, so you all need to look, look, look at the retraining advisory notes. The retraining advisory notes are very specific. 
Remember, those retrain advisory notes are directly inputted from the career field manager of that specific AFSC. Um, the retrain advisory notes are crucial along with the enlisted classification directory. Remember that paragraph 3.5? Paragraph 3.5 is the same for every AFSC. It lists those specialty qualifications and uh, uh, specifics that you must meet in order to retrain into that AFSC. Very important. Retrain advisory notes, read them. Enlisted classification directory, paragraph 3.5 of every AFSC that you wish to apply for. Okay. So some of these questions are rumor control. Um, every FTA applies in their window. I'll just say that. Every FTA applies within their retraining window. Shortfall to shortfall within your window. Overseas must be in your window. Right, right. So folks asking questions about the MVL, the MVL is a master vulnerability listing, and that's the NCORP. That's the NCO retraining program. Uh, that NCO retraining program webinar slides is also out there on the Facebook page, the AFPC uh, Facebook page. Go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, this is the FTA webinar. I'd rather only answer uh, first term airman retraining program questions so as not to confuse the two programs. They're very different programs. And so for this webinar, we'd like to only answer FTA uh, questions. Hmm. Airman Derek is asking if you submitted a document within your retraining application uh, by accident, can you delete it? Uh, that's a good question. Go in there and let us know. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, go in. Well, basically, yes, go in there, uh, do your reference number, and um, check it out, see if there's a delete option. If not, then that's fine. Uh, always communicate directly with your retraining technician via your open application. So remember, you do not need to call the TFSC. I know we get lots of phone calls and lots of SME escalations, subject matter expert escalations, uh, with folks just asking what's the status of my application. Uh, so remember, at any time, any uh, airman that has an open retraining application, not a need to call the TFSC, just log on to my PERS and uh, check it out. There's a status that tells you where your application is. Some of the statuses are sent to CFM, for a field manager, that's mean, that means that's where your package is. Some of the statuses are eligible, eligible, uh, pending member info. If it says pending member info, that means we're waiting for documents. We're waiting for documents that you have to, um, sorry, that you have to submit to us. So once you have been eligible and you submitted your application, but are still missing documents, you'll be put into pending member info. So Emory Williams has a good question. He says, can I apply for retraining early if I know I'll be deployed when my retrain window comes up? So again, uh, there is no early retraining. All FTAs will apply within their window. Shortfall to shortfall within your window, overseas within your window. All first term airmen will apply within your window. Now, part two of that question, if you miss your retraining window due to a deployment, that's fine. Apply upon your return. Type that in your case. I am applying after my retraining window due to deployment. Now, integrity first, <laughs> because we will go out there and check your duty status. If your duty status was never projected for deployment or that deployment is not updated in your MIL PDS record, your application will be closed. Are we doing it for an hour? What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Emma Little, that's a good question. So um, the question is, 
I have an assignment action code. It doesn't say which one, but it says I have an assignment action code that's going to expire May 2019. Uh, basically, I think the question is, when can I apply? So if the assignment action code is rendering you ineligible, then yes, you'll apply when the assignment action code expires. Just for an example, there are some assignment action codes for referral with PRs on top. Uh, what is it? Uh, Article 15, commissioning, projected for an assignment, projected for separation. Those types of codes will render you automatically ineligible to retrain. Uh, when those codes expire, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Then you can go out there and apply. I see some questions out here on what, what is the uh, number of quotas for each specific AFSC. Uh, you tell me. <laughs> Go out there on the uh, MyPERS retraining homepage. I say that because uh, what we're looking at right now is the DCO site and the Facebook site. So go out to your MyPERS retraining homepage, uh, click on retraining advisory, that link. That link will take you directly to the in quotas. Remember FTAs, you're looking at the in quota. And FTAs are uh, first term airmen on your first enlistment, regardless of rank. We do realize we have some tech sergeant FTAs out there. You will not look in the tech sergeant column. If you're a first term airman, you need to look at that first term airman column. Uh, yes, these slides are available online. They're on the uh, my purse. Well, they will be on the My Purse site in the next two to three business days. The morning session uh, slides, questions and answers are already posted on Facebook. In San Luis, the My Purse um, site will have the slides loaded in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sorry again for those folks asking for us to display the quotas. So the way our systems are set up, wait, my top is set up. The way my systems are set up. So we're looking at uh, two different screens. We're looking at DCO and Facebook. So again, uh, we encourage you to go out there to the My Purse homepage, click on um, the retraining homepage, click on Retrain Advisory. That'll populate the uh, end quotas for you. There's more questions out here about the retraining window. Again, folks, uh, all first-term airmen apply within their window. Overseas folks apply within their window. Shortfall to shortfall apply within their window. Um, Uh, Airman uh, David G, that's a good question. He's asking, uh, will you go up for board review before you turn your documents in? Uh, so that's a no. Would you like to elaborate? Yes. No, you will not go before the board prior to turning in your documents. We need your documents in order for you to meet the board. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so that's a good question about the SRBs. There is a certain specific, you have to go out there and look at that My Purse article. I apologize again, I, I can't display it right here. But so for the SRBs, uh, the reenlistments have a uh, policy about that. If you finish more than half or certain, I don't want to quote that, uh, but it is out there in the My Purse retraining uh, advisory. And also when you click to apply, uh, your retrain technician will do that eligibility check and they will be able to tell you whether or not you're eligible. Some of those uh, folks out there that are receiving a uh, initial enlistment bonus or a uh, SRB, um, you may have to pay a portion of that back. Those rules are set by the uh, reenlistments office. Uh, 
Uh huh. So Airman Toby, that's a good question. Uh, the minimum EPR score, there's no minimum per se, uh, just as long as it's not a referral on top. If your top EPR, for those folks that have EPRs, if your top evaluation is a referral, you're automatically ineligible to apply. So uh, when you click on that retraining link, remember those AACs that pop up, they'll pop up and tell you you're ineligible to apply. Now, when you have a non-referral on top, and you're otherwise eligible, then you can apply to retrain. It needs to be within your retraining window. If you miss your retraining window due to that derogatory information, your next availability to apply to retrain is when you become a second termer. Do you know anything about that? The So, uh, Airman Geiger, that's a good question. Is the retraining window different for retraining to battlefield airmen, career fields? No, it is not. All first term airmen will apply within their retraining window. All first term airmen will apply within their retraining window. Shortfall to shortfall in your window, overseas in your window. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Clark is asking, are past window ETPs no longer being accepted? Uh, I think you're asking, so if you've passed uh, your, um, if you're outside your first term airman retraining window and you would still like to apply to retrain, then yes, you will need to submit an exception of policy. Now, remember the exception of policies, all ETPs must be endorsed by your unit commander. Those ETPs must have specific guidelines, a specific reasoning as to why you didn't apply during your retraining window. And uh, we'll real quickly just kind of populate that ETP slide as soon as I see what number it was. You can probably hear me flipping pages. Uh, so that was slide 27. And that's the uh, exception of policy criteria. We've got about five more minutes, folks. Go ahead and type your questions in. So those are exception of policy um, rules. <laughs> more questions about the retraining window. Uh, we can flip back to that slide. <laughs> or we can um, just say that all retrainees will apply within their window. Okay, uh, so more questions on the shortfall. So um, I'll try to be clear on that. Shortfall to shortfall, yes, you can retrain. If you have an AFSC on the shortfall list, yes, you can retrain. You will retrain into another shortfall AFSC. You will do so within your retraining window. The question is again, if I'm not on the shortfall list, can I retrain? The answer is yes. Next question, when will I retrain? You'll retrain in your retraining window. So check it out, guys and gals. All first-term airmen will retrain within their retraining window. Pass it on. Help us out with this rumor control. All first-term airmen will apply within their retraining window. Uh, displayed there is your retraining window. Okay, there's more questions about the retraining window. Displayed there is the retraining window. I'm going to switch over to Facebook for a sec. Airman Vaughn, that's a lot of uh, great questions. All one, two, three, four, five of them. Um, so we're getting into dangerous territory here. You're asking a lot of reenlistment questions and assignments questions. I would prefer if you call the TFSC with those specifics. Just know you're going to apply within your retraining window if you're a first-term airman. Remember, guys, first-term airman uh, just means that you're on your first enlistment. 
Yes, you can be a tech sergeant first term airman. Make sure those tech sergeant first term airmen are not looking in the tech sergeant column on the retrain advisory. Uh, either you're a first term airman or you're not. So if you're a first term airman, FTA column, if you're a staff, tech, master, senior, second term, then those are the columns for you on the advisory. Can you go to the slide that had the AAC? I'm sorry. So yes, we can go back to that slide. That slide doesn't show all of them though. Um, if you are questioning if you're eligible or not, go ahead and click apply. You can click apply right now. Uh, go to MyPERS, the MyPERS homepage, the retraining homepage. If you click on apply to retrain, it'll tell you right then and there whether you're eligible to apply. It'll tell you whether or not you have an AAC assignment action code or an ALC assignment limitation code. So actually, you can do that right now without even opening up an application. You can click on Apply to Retrain, and uh, Mill PDS will give you real time um, whether you're eligible or not to retrain. Remember those A1Cs that don't have an EPR on top? Uh, you'll need to apply on that left, left link. Uh, yeah, so shown here is what uh, my PERS will display. Now, this is just an example. Uh, you may not have all of those codes. We'll go to the next slide. If you want to see which codes specifically you have, you need to log out of MyPERS and log in to virtual. Virtual MPF, that retraining link, click one more slide, will give you exactly uh, the definition of your code and why you're ineligible to retrain, uh, why you're ineligible for promotion and reenlistment. Okay, we've got about two more minutes. So Sar Sergeant Booker is asking, can I have can I have in my BOP and still apply for retraining? So we kind of don't want to touch on the assignments issue. Go ahead and click Sergeant Booker. Go ahead and log on to my PERS and click and see what the assignment availability code you have. Uh, the my PERS is not um, detail specific. Click on virtual MPF and it will be detail specific on whether or not you can apply. There's a lot of questions asking, am I eligible? The easiest way, uh, go ahead and just click apply to retrain. Apply to retrain is not going to open up the application for you until you continue with the steps. But if you just want to know if you're eligible, just click the button, click the link. It'll tell you if you're eligible or not. 